This was meant to, there was a, a story of a mathematical model, and for those who are not in our, our, our mathematical economic theory business, this is our job. But we, we, we weave fables that are mathematically precise where everyone's uh, goals and, 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 and choices are, are within a mathematically precise little imaginary universe uh, that's supposed to in some ways resemble the world. And, and the point of that story was that leaders of any important, who take any important position of power in the world uh, have to be surrounded by courtiers who are wary of the, of the leader's ingratitude. The leader's principal attribute is one of a reputation for gratitude, for reliably rewarding good service. But they, in order to make it credible that they will be so grateful, they need to create an institution of surrounding themselves with courtiers who are wary of ingratitude and who judge their leader even as they serve him, him or her. That's, uh, and is there anything else I wanted to say? Uh, uh, in terms of how I understand where do constitutions come from? How do you write something on a piece of paper or parchment and suddenly have it become a, a law of the land? And the answer is, that you, of course, you can write down things on pieces of paper that don't become the law of the land. So uh, I think we should recognize that ultimately our great social institutions and laws are built out of people's individual reputations. It, uh, uh, that the patterns of behavior that a leader must maintain to keep his supporters trust may be regarded as an informal personal constitution for the leader. And this personal constitution, first and foremost, requires the leader to appropriately reward uh, loyal supporters, but other forms of behavior might be required. If, if one of us is cheated by the leader, the rest of us are in this, in this personal constitution going to react negatively. That person might look different from the rest of us. And, 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 and by the way, if, if we have an, a prejudice on skin color and, and a particular shade of skin color is then viewed as, oh, that's a different person, then perhaps that, that, that kind of individual is not going to be able to find a comfortable place in the court because the other courtiers wouldn't identify. But hopefully we do identify with each other and differences of skin color are not, are not important to us. But some of us might not even be flesh and blood. We might actually be pieces of parchment. Uh, and, cheat and abusing the, trust, the, the pledge to that, to that piece of parchment is viewed as being isomorphic to uh, failing to support a, uh, an, another individual. And then once we all go into a, the distrustful equilibrium, uh, the, the leader's career is over. Uh, a leader may feel to, fe fear to violate a formal constitution when his political relationships were direct developed in its context. In, a, in an established political system. There is no written constitution of this country, but there certainly is a long political tradition, and all of the top contenders for power in, in the United Kingdom are people who have, throughout their careers, in developing their relationship trust with their supporters, have, uh, have, 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 accept, have, have obviously been, 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 been accepting the, 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 the legalities of, 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 of democratic politics here, that one doesn't uh, intimidate voters, one doesn't threaten physical violence against, uh, against political rivals, and one accepts one, you know, the, the choice of the voters uh, in, in determining who of us win. Um, but, uh, uh, but in a new democracy, of course, uh, there is no such context, and that may be one reason to understand why new democracy is so much diffi more difficult than established democracy, because the personal reputations of those people who rise to leadership, whatever, uh, the, nobody is, is going to rise from nowhere. They, they have, uh, uh, the top contenders in a nation will be people who have had some uh, sup po sup political career beforehand under the old system, and whatever was the, the personal constitution that bound them will continue to be relevant. So constitutional government can be based on everything in our society, in our, in our political systems, is ulti may ultimately be based on supporters' fragile trust of their leaders. Uh, so that's, uh, and a new constitution cannot make leaders violate their personal constitutions with the old, oh, if you write down something that says that, you know, new law, we shall not uh, give away too much uh, public funds to, in, in patronage benefits to our supporters. Wait a minute. If, if, my, if my supporters have always expected such patronage benefits uh, and they would think I was cheating them if, 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 if I suddenly obeyed that law, I'm not going to obey it and, and, and nobody should be expected to. It, it may. Okay. So now I, what I want to do is, 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 is bend towards the, the world that Louise Fortman described. 
here's a simple model. Um, uh, it's a model of moral hazard in, in local public investments. Uh, so this is new and, and, and uh, let's see, and, and I hope we'll see if you like it. Uh, so I'm going to consider a community, a, villi a, a, a village in Botswana with some large number N of residents, maybe N is, is, is 20,000. Um, in each period, uh, a, a local pub public investment can, uh, a local public agent, there's some investment, I don't know, it's, it's maintaining roads, maintaining a good uh, uh, justice system, um, a school, but there's some local, uh, there's local, a local investment and uh, the size of the investment K is going to be how much is spent per resident, so the total size, but it's one investment, it's one integral investment, building the, the network of the water system or the, or the road system um, is, 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 it costs NK total, but I'm, I'm, I'm describing it in a per resident cost uh, K. And there's some budget, and how much is spent is going to be controlled by one agent, because it, it ultimately, the, the, it's, it's a very expensive investment, but one person has to control it, and I'm calling that person the public agent. That's not a very good name. Maybe we should call him or her the magistrate or the mayor. A, a mayor would be a good term. A magistrate or mayor, I, the word is agent in the slide. And the agent cannot be prevented from diverting this public investment into his or her own personal consumption and then running away with impunity. So that's, there's a constraint. This is going to generate a moral hazard rent. Uh, when you, if, if, if K, NK per year, per, this is actually per, per period or per year and per resident. Every year NK has to be spent on this public, maintaining the road system perhaps or maintaining the justice system. NK has to be spent and, and, and the, the, it's going to be controlled by one person and nobody can see whether the person has actually spent the funds or has, uh, has stolen them, but, he, but, but the agent, um, he has, has the option to steal the money and run away. Therefore, his expected utility of being the public agent must be NK because he has the option. We don't want him to do this, but he cannot be, no, we cannot have the public good unless we give a sum of money that's N times K to the, uh, and K could be any non-negative number, um, to this public agent, and the agent will have the opportunity to run away with it. So his expected utility in, e in, in, in equilibrium cannot be less than NK because he has the option to just steal it. That means, since N is a large number, I'm going to say there are 10,000. The square root of 10,000 is 100. I know what those say. There are 10,000 people um, in the village. Uh, 10,000 times, I don't know what K is, but it, it's, that's a lot of money, and uh, maybe, maybe much more than anyone would earn in a year, perhaps. A anyone would earn in, in, set in many years, perhaps. Uh, so we're going to have to give this person some, somebody. Uh, it's good, it could be anyone who do, does this, but um, each resident in this model, uh, each resident can benefit from the public good. Okay, only the agent can directly observe how much he's actually investing. He can just steal it. He could steal all of it or some of it. Each resident can benefit from the local public good, but only by making a small co-investment, which I'll call C, which only the resident can observe. And then each resident who actually co-invests has an independent probability, pi of k, of getting some big success probability v, and otherwise zero. So pi of the, the probability, so, that, so, so if, if we have a good road system or we have a good uh, justice system, then my investment in a small business will, will, might succeed or might fail. Uh, I have to put something into it uh, as a resident of this village, uh, but my probability will increase the more is, has been spent, pi. Uh, uh, the success probability is an increasing concave function of the public investment, which is really NK, I guess I'm defining it, the total investment, the, the per capita, the amount per spent per capita, but N is a constant. So I'm assuming agents are risk neutral, which is certainly not true in small villages, but, but subject to limited liability, which means non-negative payoffs, and that, in, and that in particular the public agent can run away. Uh, everyone discounts the future now, this is a different model, so I'm sorry, the discount factor, per, this is a discrete time model per year. Uh, beta, and I have a little exam numerical example of what maximizes the total vote productivity. What's the total productivity? The, the per capita cost and, and the, uh, the cost of co-investment are being subtracted, but the, uh, the probability of success is, a fun is an increasing function of K times the value that, that the resident gets, and, and any whatever. Um, so there's some solution. In the, the, you know. So the point is the agent can be given an incentive to make the, we're only going to get this public good, which is presumably profitable for if, if it's made, uh, if, if, the, if the incentive has, 
if the agent is given an incentive to make the, the, the public investment. I'm assuming that, that, that everybody's selfish, a selfish materialist. This, this agent is lucky, he's gonna get very rich because he's gonna have large, he, 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 we have to allow him to get very rich because otherwise he'll steal the money. Uh, but he has to be given an incentive to make the investment and he can only be given an incentive by large rewards that depend on the residents, since the only people who know whether he succeeded as the residents. So I don't know, my little equilibrium of, of, of some of optimal uh, system, pi of k was a half in, in, in the, what I claimed was in some mathematical sense the optimal amount of investment. We're gonna invest so that each one has, so it's very simple. If, we, 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 uh, if, if n is a very large number, there's gonna be relatively little uncertainty. There's a central limit theorem uh, that says it's approximately, you know, that tells us a little bell-shaped curve. The law of large numbers are, in this case, central limit theorem. It's gonna say, um, if n is large, we expect just about a half of the people to have successful projects, and if, if, if less than half, if, 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 if significantly less than a half uh, reports successful projects, then he's probably stolen the money and he should be fired, but as long as he can get close to 50% or more, um, then uh, we, should, we should say you, 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 get, you get paid and just keep up doing that every year. Um, so consider a plan in which the agent is asked to invest NK every period and is, is promised some reward R per resident, so NR will be the total reward each period as long as he retains his position. Uh, the agent can be deterred from stealing the investment and running away. He cannot be deterred unless the following. So if he's one might, an income every year I'm going to be paid NR. Uh, how much, how do I feel about that over the future of, of well, if, if, if beta discount factor per year is approximately 95%, then the present discounted value of getting NR every period is NR divided by 1 minus 95% by 5%, which is uh, 20 times NR. So the capital value of holding this nice position where I'm going to get a, nice in a very nice income as the magistrate of this, of this has, has a value that's uh, much more than NK. Well, it has to, th that has to be at least NK. The amount I can steal in any one year and then lose my job has to be, can't be greater, has to be less than or equal to the amount, the present discounted value of the long income stream I'm going to get as magistrate of this village has to be better than the amount I could get by stealing the, the money I have now and knowing that, of course, that, that, that it'll be obvious that I didn't do a good job and I'll have to run away, but I'll run away to uh, uh, Switzerland or the Caribbean or wherever you go um, and enjoy w one year's worth of corruption. Um, so that, that just gives you a formula that, you know, the, the per capita amount that we want, we want to entrust it with times one minus beta, that's, that's nice. If beta's the discount factor is, is, is close to one, because people are very patient and the future is not so discounted, then, uh, then that's about you know, 5% of, 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 the, of the value that we're entrusting. We have to pay them every period and the prospect of keeping that income going keeps good behavior. And, can, and actually, it's, it, the agency problem, as we talk about, is, is not that difficult. Here is, you know, uh, so if the, in this case it's a half, there's a, and the, the, the formula for the standard deviation of, of the actual fraction of successes, it's, it's, it's a simple, well-known formula, and as n gets larger, that fraction of actual successes gets smaller. If n is 10,000, that's what, well, let's see. Um, then uh, that's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 divided by uh, 10,000, the square root of that is 0.5 over 100 is 2%. So two percentage points standard deviation with 10,000 people and whatever. So if we say you better have at least 40% approval, it's extremely likely that if he does the right thing, he'll have it. If he, you know, the, 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 um, and so we'll be able to get him to do approximately the right thing. Um, the point is, however, um, so the, the agent can be induced to invest close to the desired amount by polling the residents each period. That's what I've, I've set up a little world where the only way we can get this public good is by polling the residents and making the agent's reward and retention depend on his success rate being within a few standard <coughs> deviations, which is 2% if it's 10,000, uh, uh, of the stipulated uh, fraction of successes that, that, that we think he'd get if he spent the money right. This is incentive for the agent to invest appropriately depends on an equilibrium expectation that the, that the residents will, uh, will honestly report when he helps them succeed, and conversely, their willingness to support the agent's retention depends on expectation that he can be trusted to keep uh, doing this rather than getting some other agent. Um, and, and, you know, so in our, 
so this is a model of why you know, getting public goods requires leaders, as, as, as Banfield said, we're going to need a system where some, some, somebody gets to be better, better off than, than the rest of the community because he takes advantage of creating public goods for the rest of us. Uh, but uh, uh, that was the phrase uh, that I used yesterday was, um, I think we should recognize that a successful democratic society one of its most important assets is the, its supply of, peop, of individuals who have good reputations for spending public funds responsibly. Yes, this is the, that model. Uh, this is the, uh, the world where the, the reputation for spending public funds responsibly, and you'll keep turning me back because you trust me to, and as long as a, a, a significant fraction of you think I've done a good job, you all want to keep co-investing, and you keep uh, uh, a good fraction of you are, are satisfied with the results. Um, the, the, we've got this communication. I'll, now, in our moral hazard, this public trust, as I've assumed everyone is exactly the same, I haven't put any differences of talent in this model, uh, which is not true, but also not so false either. I think most people have, are very, have, have enormous talents, the, the, very, the most talented of us are very talented, and so are the least talented of most of us, very incredibly talented. Um, this public trust could be bestowed on anyone in my little model, but the community must somehow coordinate on someone because a lar these large resources, the NK is a large amount of, 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 of resources, are going to be given to one person to, to, to coordinate. Now, I told you, I thought, think of what is a, le what is a political leader, a political leader, this is multiple equilibrium. Any one of us could arbitrarily, this is the, the in Montegrano, if any one of us was identified as being the person who we'd all, you, all of us would entrust the money to, and then we keep re-electing him, as long as he expects to be re-elected and to keep getting this money and trust him, he's willing to, to fulfill it, and as long as we expect him to continue doing it, it uh, works. But if we think he's going to cheat us, then of course we don't want to entrust him with the public budget anymore, and we want to get rid of him as soon as possible, and then he wants to steal anything he gets and run away with it as soon as possible if he gets significant resources. So there's this multiple equilibrium problem, and 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 and, and so what, one of the, the, what, if nobody else solves multiple coordination problems, that's what, uh, what political leaders do. And the, there's a na we're in a nation. There's a national political leader. A national political leader may naturally want to influence the selection. The model I did before the break was a model in which in order to run, run well, of course, as is tr certainly true, in order to, to mobilize support for high, high office, um, the, uh, a candidate for office needs to convince a lot of people that they will benefit, and so he needs a, a supply of benefits. Well, these moral hazard rents for controlling the, the resources needed to, to, main, to build and maintain local public goods, those moral hazard rents could be in, under the control of the, na assigned by the national leader, perhaps, and if he can, and he wants to, and they're valuable, and he wants prizes, so, so the appointment to, to be a local magistrate uh, is a uh, maybe a valuable prize that a national leader may want to have, and of course, in, in many such offices are controlled by presidents and prime ministers. Um, so the power to name the local public agent could increase the fund of rewards for loyal supporters uh, by the, the value, the annual value of, of this moral hazard rent, which is n times r in, in our in our in our solution. Uh, by the way, uh, here I said the. The rulers, the, the optimal value, the, let's see, the, the, the residents' gain is, 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 is their success from the, uh, from successful, the, their income from, their expected income from successful projects, minus the cost of the, of the, the local investment per person, minus their per person share of paying the, the, the salary of the magistrate, minus their co-investment. That, but if the rule, if the ruler could extract those gains by increasing taxes on the, these people, to the extent that they benefit from the public good, uh, and the ruler also is benefiting from the R because it, a, that's part of the fund that the ruler can pay to, uh, then, the, then the selfish ruler would actually want to maximize this simple formula, the, uh, um, the expected value of the, of, of, the, of the investment minus its cost minus the co-investment cost, and that you actually get more co-investment. But that's not important. So that, w that was the, the solution I gave. The problem is, National political risks of local accountability, local accountability without, when, when you have centralized allocation of these offices, of these, 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 these local public agent offices, um, that creates national political risks. So this is what the uh, previous model was meant to say. 
The national leader, I've said, may benefit from nominating agents to fill these, these any vacancies in these local magistrate positions, but their accountability must depend on information that's available locally. Even under a local contract, in my little model, I don't know, you know, I was kind of vague about what was the exact cutoff at which we, we, the, the, we're going to get rid of the guy, but it has to be, you ask the residents, so how did it go? Do, do you think that this, that this person provided good service? And there's something that's a little bit less than this number pi of k, call it you know, 50, close to 50%, where you say if he doesn't get that much support, he's dismissed, otherwise he gets to stay on. So we have to poll the residents, there has to be some voting. Um, but we have seen that a strong leader of a national government is going is to arise to power by creating vulnerabilities that is going to surround himself with courtiers who are what was it, wary of his ingratitude, who his, his reputation for reliably distributing uh, patronage benefits is, 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 prime, is essential to his, political, to his political position and he is vulnerable to, to losing his political, he the national leader is vulnerable to losing his political position if his suspicious courtiers get, start to get any whiff of, any smell of uh, the possibility that he's systematically denying the, the, these, these benefits. And by the way, when a, if he controls the appointment to the magistrate's position, then when one magistrate is, is, is dismissed, then he gets to pick somebody else and sell the office to some other supporter. So a, with this suspicion, the courtiers, when, a, when one of us in the court is appointed to, a, to be the magistrate of, 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 of this district and control the local public, uh, the, the, the fund for local public goods in that district, that's a privilege and it's due to, me, to that magistrate because of his, uh, uh, that's due to me as, as, as a courtier, because of my previous service to our, le our leader, to our prince, uh, to our political leader, our national leader, uh, but all of us are suspicious that he might engineer our removal. Um, so what happens if the local villagers vote me out? They say I didn't do a good job. Uh, so the, the, I've been dismissed. I, was a, I, I supported our national leader. You, I, part of a, we're all courtiers, let's say, and I was, I supported, we all supported the leader, and what my reward was I got to be, go be the, in, in, you know, the, um, uh, the, 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 the magistrate for, for, for the, for the village of Kenilworth, and uh, so I got there, and then the people of Kenilworth said, they, I didn't do it, they vote me out. Well, was that, who did that? That, well, you know, the, everyone's first reaction is, did the leader, is, does the leader want to get to appoint someone else, and, and, and you know, what I, and he's got to forget what I did in the past, and, and now wants to give some new favorite the, the position, or was I genuinely voted out because I stole the money, uh, and, and the villagers were tired of getting bad service. The, the, my dismissal by the villagers be becomes, it's, and there has been a, there, even in my simple model, there has to be a positive probability of the little model, it's one minus pi to the k raised to the nth power, that nobody will get any benefits. There's a posit it's a small positive, but the, there's, there's an extremely few number of people, even if I do the right thing, there's a small probability that my, that my public good in the, within the model might fail to deliver broad benefits, and therefore the villagers will be angry at me, it'll look like I stole the money. Um, even if I didn't. So there's going to be a, positive, a, a certain number of magistrates who are going to be voted out, and suddenly there's a problem at court. The courtiers are, are disposed to be suspicious, and, and, and the, 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 the leader has given them, they have the power to, to overthrow the leader based on their suspicion that this was actually uh, lack of, the, the, the leader wanting to, uh, to, 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 to reassign this valuable prize to someone else and is willing to, to cheat one of, one of the old supporters. So this political risk can be avoided only if the local agent's re-election is clearly an autonomous decision by the, the local residents, which the leader cannot control. That's it. So suddenly I've created a world where in order to get these benefits, the leader has to say, it has to be credible that this is the national leader, this Queen Elizabeth, and, but, she, but, but the vote in the village is, 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 is not is something she cannot control, even though she has enormous power to influence, she has enormous patronage power in this kingdom, and yet it is known. If that works, then it, then it works. She, but then, of course, but that's a, that's a tall order. So, so the first one is, is, is that we, we have a model in which we can understand why, in order to get some sort of efficient local public investment, which once anticipated could be taxed by the center, um, 
and that creates valuable positions, it requires some sort of political decentralization. Uh, I should just emphasize, when information about the, you know, the point is when information about the agent's performance is only available locally, then the agent's position must depend on constitutionally autonomous local politics. It, th the informational thing is tricky because after all, if all these villagers, thousand, you know, we've, with the results of a poll of thousands of villagers, surely that, you know, that, well, th that could be seen. But it's not, I want to emphasize, it's, well, who knows what is a good question. It's not enough for the national leader to know that the local residents were dissatisfied because the leader needs to be able to verifiably prove it to the whole circle of courtiers. If this village is large, so that, that's the knowledge that's needed. And for a small remote village, that's, that's, a, that's not a good, you know, it's, it's reasonable to say, no, that you can't do. Um, the, but uh, perhaps uh, in the politics of, a lar of one of the major cities of the realm, it is possible. Um, Look, so this is a perspective on, uh, as the leader's primary asset is his reputation for reliable patronage, it may be hard for him to allow some patronage prizes to depend on independent political forces, and there's, mo there's more to say. I mean, dependence on local approval admits the possibility that other local political considerations might cause an agent, uh, uh, um, an agent's rewards to be denied. Maybe the, the, the villagers are just, just, uh, just feeling grumpy. This, you know, it adds noise into the process, but it's worse political opponents might choose to interfere in local votes. I, I'm, if, if there really are these autonomous votes in the very, I, part of the way I, I get to be the leader of a country is, is, is I promise to appoint people to be local magistrates, but then they will be genuine, their retention of that position will be genuinely up to autonomous voting, then um, my political opponents might try to undermine my ability to, uh, 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 to, to reward my supporters by systematically interfering in local votes and trying to convince people to, to, to vote against my agent, retaining my agents. Uh, so the, the, the point is that these, these efficient public goods may re actually require some genuine political decentralization. That is the argument. Um, so the, so the, the, that gets us to, to the next model. I will have time for another model. Um, when political decentralization has not been established, of course, moving towards genuine political decentralization of the system of local accountability for public agents could be seen as a devaluation of, of promise rewards. Uh, if, if, I've got, if, I've, if I've been competing for power in this, in this nation based on the understanding that I'll get to appoint people to the offices of, of mayor and governor, uh, which we're now understanding under the centralized system, uh, will still involve control, moral hazard rents because of the control of public resources, but they will be only those public investments whose success or failure will be easily seen by, 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 by a wide range of national agents uh, who, who don't actually live in the locality. Uh, so it'll be an inferior set of, of, of investments. If I say, no, let's, let's actually make everybody happier by, uh, by, by making mayors and governors locally elected because they'll be able to provide better governance, then my supporters who in the past in my career, this is a new decentralization, they were expecting me they were thinking some of us are going to be appointed mayor or governor if he wins, uh, and suddenly I'm saying, no, 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 I'm gonna let the people choose the mayors and governors separately, no, you know, and I, I'll put you up as my candidate, but you might not win, good luck with it. Well, if that was the understanding, that's one thing, but if I, if I suddenly say it, it's, it's, it sounds like I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, ch scrimp I'm cheating on the rewards. Uh, and again, that, that's, going, that's what you were predisposed to be suspicious of, you, you my supporters. Um, but. Now the next point, or leads this dot dot dot, is because I'm leading up to the next model, which is, uh, and which is what I talked about last night. Uh, the uh, fully autonomous local politics can generate new competitive entrants into international politics, which is going to be a, a further against the in in interests of incumbent national leaders. And that phrase is important because it's it's part of the, the thesis. That this this is. I feel this is worth talking about when I have the opportunity to talk in All Souls College. I tell. Professor Vince Crawford, I want to talk about the role of decentralized democracy and, get, and ask other people in development economics to come and join me and talk about it because I think it's undersupplied because I think it's against the interests of national leaders and therefore when, it, when, it, when previous constitutional traditions, uh, uh, political forces have, po political history has not forced them to have a certain amount of decentral political decentralization as in a government is created from nothing in 1960 by b independence, uh, those people who find themselves on the top are going to want to say, I, we, let's, let's not have local politics here, let's have only national politics. Why? Because an agent, those 
those local public agents, remember, were in an equilibrium where, where they were in, trusted. Uh, they had broad trust from people in their community, and that fact of broad trust could be used as, as to, to, to a, a candidate for national office needs the trust of a large number of, of supporters, and, uh, and, and they could use that, that broad trust in the, in, in, in the local community to mobilize their support to become a new rival for power in the nation. Um, I should say, when I think about a country like Nigeria, where there is intense ethnic identity in different that's, it's, that's different across regions, and an intense tradition of suspicion of, uh, ri of, 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 of the, the distribution of, of power across ethnic groups, then being a trusted local leader in one tribal area, in one area, may not carry over, because people might naturally think in other areas, oh, but you're only a good leader to people of your tribe. Uh, and if people set, and if human beings distinguish themselves by that kind of identity, then, th then that, would, that would reduce this effect. But, but to the extent that, peop that, the, that people are not separated into suspicious uh, a sense of, 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 of rival identity groups across a nation, then an agent who gains trust in one community could mobilize support to become rivals for higher power. So autonomous local power politics, as I said last night, been put in economic language, lowers barriers into, into national politics, making it more competitive, reducing the competitive profits for incumbent national leaders. That was the an economic analogy, and that becomes a reason. For, so I want to make sure I've got, I have enough time to give you a good, a, a good survey of the Federalism and Incentives for Successive Democracy paper, which is, was the Quarterly Journal of Political Science in 2006. It was the first article in this new journal, and I, I submitted it about 12 hours before they were, by accident, before they were actually open for, for submissions, but fortunately they accepted it anyway. So, <laughs> so here, this was, this, was, this was a paper written in response to, uh, you know, the, 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 if I've ranted about things, I think that it, it comes back to a sense of, 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 of outrage when America and, 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 and with, with, with British alliance invaded, uh, the, we were a coalition invading Iraq in 2003. I, I ter objected terribly to this. I thought it was a ba very bad idea. And I, uh, I thought that we then uh, uh, failed in our, in, in our moral obligation to the Iraqi people after by failing to establish a, uh, uh, a pro appropriate regime, and so I wanted to ask, the, this is, this is a, a, a paper on democratization about that's meant to illustrate what the logic behind what I thought and what I really argued last night. So here it is. I owed this, I've owed this since last night uh, to people here in, in, in Oxford. Um, the question is, of course, constitutionals are, so I'm a game theorist, con constitutions are the rules of a political game. Uh, I'm arguing that, that federal decentralization is a good thing, so I need a game theoretic model. I should tell you, I think this argument is a good one, but, but when I, in, 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 in 25 minutes, I can, I can give you a sketch of the model, and I have to tell you, the result is with a bunch of technical assumptions, the bottom line will be, I get a result such as I described, but it's a very weak result. It is, it, so uh, it does not gotta show what it is, but um, make some assumptions, that are not stupid, but are certainly not, the life is more complicated, we will get a game with multiple equilibria, and, uh, and I will say something in favor of that, that, that the worst equilibria uh, that you get of unitary centralized democracy uh, go away when you go to decentralization. That's really all I can show, but it's that there will be some benefit, uh, there will be a theorem in which that says that under federalism we can guarantee that voters will get some benefits from democracy, but, uh, but under a unitary state there are equilibria in which voters get no benefits from democracy. That's, so that's, that's the theorem. Um, so constitutions are the rules of the game, and that a game theorist is going to uh, study them by how they affect the equilibrium behavior. It's obvious that new democracies cannot copy, guarantee success simply by copying the successful constitutional in institutions of another nation. There are multiple equilibria and culture matters. Good, I've said that. But what could make a nation culturally unready for democracy? There are some things, I believe, by the way, that the, for example, the words with that we use to express piety have, are, do not, they may be different, very different in different parts of the world, uh, but 
they are, no, they are not some words that are better for, for democracy that are, and other words. That we, no, I think that doesn't make a difference. Our taste in food or the way we dress is not important. Uh, I think the cultural thing that matters is what makes, what people expect of their leaders. From Thomas Schelling's analysis, the focal point effect was that w one crucial aspect of culture is how we identify, in a game that has multiple equilibria, what do we think determines the equilibrium that, that, that our, we and our neighbors are going to play. That to me is an aspect of culture. And the question of who among us are leaders and what do they need to do in order to maintain the privileged status of being our social leaders is a good question. There is on this island a royal family and it's simply understood and those people in the royal family, I don't want to say that they're bad people, but, but I don't think anybody can argue that, that their virtues are, are are just conspicuously outstanding either. They are just the royal family and, and we all know that, and that's a, that's a lovely thing and I honor that, thank you. you. Being yeah. I, sorry. But uh, <laughs> yes, uh, that I don't think anyone could argue that they are, uh, are significantly better or significantly worse than other families in the nation, but, uh, but it, it, the loyalty, the, 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 the understanding of their, of their privilege, of their important status as in, in the society is, is something that, w that, that is, is true and, and, I, and I personally want to express some, some appreciation of that. Uh, but it is, it, but who are leaders uh, and uh, in America being a Kennedy can get you a, 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 a standing for an office that, uh, more than, than, than others, but, but, but there are other people who can run. Um, all right, what can make a cult nature culture? What do, we ex what do you have to do to become a leader and uh, not the ident specific identity, but what, what, what would you, if you did it, would cause you to lose that leader leading role is, is a critical part of the, the real constitution, new and established Democracies differ in their expectations of leaders. Uh, we should recognize the reputational effects in the old regime, in an old authoritarian regime, where to ser serve one's superiors and reward supporters. Uh, when democracy is new in a nation, no politician has an established reputation for using power responsibly to serve the general population. It, 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 it was a dictator, there were many powerful agents, but they served Whatever they did, they did uh, because in, in, in pre-invasion pre Iraq, that's because Saddam Hussein was watching. Saddam Hussein was the only person who had a reputation for using political power as he did uh, to serve for whatever, he, for whatever purposes he used them for. Everyone else who had power in Iraq, in Saddam Hussein's Iraq, did, used it uh, under, the, under the supervision of Saddam Hussein and no one had an individual reputation. They had the, the, the people in power had uh, obviously took, you know, had to be known as loyally serving the, the supreme leader and, uh, and also, of course, they, they did have patronage operations on their own. Voters, so I'm going to make an equilibrium which, the, which I'm going to assume there's actual voting going on. In fact, I'm going to assume there's just basically every, all the voters are the same, so I'm going to assume they all are unanimous, so there's maybe just one voter, which means the politics that I'm going to describe will be as if one random, genuinely random person is chosen on election day, we ask that random person, who do you want to be the, you know, to win this election? And that's it. Um, that's the story. But who do they choose? But the voter has to choose a candidate, and the voter is not himself a candidate. It's a ra just a random individual on the street. And voters may expect the first leader to to um, to abuse power. We're not going to talk about suppressing opposition. I'm going to assume there won't be suppression of opposition. The slide is wrong. That's a, uh, that was in in, in the, the more complicated model. But voters may express the, the, the first leader to abuse power to just to benefit himself and his supporters that got him on the candidate list. But if the voters think that any replacement may do the same, um, then we're going to get a bad equilibrium. The w so I have to build a model which I can get. If the question is, if I'm going to ask the question, what form of democratic constitution can actually make democracy provide better benefits? Can, can some democratic constitutions provide more competition more, again, I'm sorry. Everybody should understand the purpose of democracy is to make leadership res come from a, a kind of marketplace of competition. We understand in economic marketplaces that competition uh, induce suppliers to provide better service at lower cost. And we're, we're hoping that the suppliers of public services will provide better public service at lower tax and corruption, lower cost, and the, and the profits they take are corruption, we could say, uh, that that corruption wedge will be reduced and more public services for less taxes will be competitively provided 
rather than you know, profit competitive by, by, by suppliers who would themselves like to maximize the benefits that they receive, which, are, which we could call corruption, because they have to compete with each other. But maybe that will fail. So, I'm so if I'm going to make the, the rules of the democratic game matter, I'm going to assume that the democratic game actually works. But I want to get bad equilibria where there isn't any competitive benefit. So I'm going to create a model where there's multiple equilibria in unitary democracies, but, but demo and the result is going to be we're going to multiple good equilibria and bad equilibria in unitary democracies. There'll be equilibria where democracy succeeds in, get in generating benefits, but there'll be equilibria where democracy is frustrated. It doesn't provide any benefits to the, to the, to the voters, even though they are getting to vote, but they get no benefits from it. Uh, but democracy cannot be consistently frustrated in a federal system. How can democracy be frustrated? If we can vote them out, why, why don't they serve us? The answer is, where does it say it? Um, if they expect that their replacement will, will be the same, so, and there's some cost of transition. So here's the, here's the model. That what there are, these, are, these are all the moving parts in the model, and then I'm going to have a second slide where it'll be, it'll be more complicated, but that's because everything will be repeated at the national level and the provincial level. So here's the model. So there's some benefit to being a leader every period, B, and if you serve corruptly, uh, you get a bigger benefit if you're the leader of the B plus C. And the, is the leader a single individual or a party or a faction? Uh, I don't know, I'll call a politician or a leader or individual. As if they're in, I'll talk about them as individuals, maybe, but they could be parties or integrated factions. And the leader or the politician's benefit out of office is zero. The voters, if the, if the leader serves responsibly, the voter gets a benefit of W, and zero if the leader serves corruptly. So there's basically a choice, be a, 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 a responsibly serving leader or a corruptly serving leader. <laughs> but here's, I'm going to put in one number, X, which is a positive number, all these numbers are positive by assumption, which is the transition cost to changing leader. The transition cost could be due to the new leader having lear learning on the job, thefts, the, the, uh, the outgoing leader will, will take the, the silverware from the presidential palace, or perhaps to, the, if you're an active voter, you can only vote them out of office by opposing the incumbent, and the incumbent will make that difficult for you. There's some possible small cost of exercising your rights as a voter against uh, an incumbent leader. Uh, and that's just co costly. So th that's, that is the key of the model, that there is a, po a small positive transition cost. Now, this is a, a, th th this, this is a master class that I want to say that th this, is a this is a technique of game theoretic modeling. I'm going to put in um, epsilon in mathematics traditionally, and here as elsewhere, represents a number that's positive but very small. And I'm going to put in, an, I'm not, everyone is not the same. Most politicians are normal. A normal politician is a politician who wants to maximize his expected payoff, and there's some, this, this is, this is, these are per period, all these payoffs are per period, and, the, and future payoffs are discounted by a factor of, of rho, which is then a number slightly less than one, like 0.95. It was called beta and delta earlier. I'm sorry, I keep changing different models and different notation. Uh, yeah, but still Greek, yeah. Um, the, uh, So the, the uh, leaders are, everybody wants to maximize their payoff, but I'm going to put in a small probability that, you, that there are some people who are virtuous leaders. Virtuous leaders don't just, they, they don't want to be corrupt, they, they just want to be good. Um, so look, I'm you know, putting in virtue, uh, but I don't want to put very much of it in. There's just a tiny probability. If you, if, you th if you grab somebody on the street, there is a one in a million chance that that person might be somebody who, if, if they were the leader, uh, maybe a million's too small. Let's make it one in a hundred thousand uh, chance that 1% uh, of 1% probability that any new politician is, is an always responsible, virtuous type who just is not capable of being corrupt. Okay, so that, that's, now I've solved it. Uh, but I, but I, but, but most, most politicians in this model are what I call normal, which it means that other things being equal, they'd prefer to be corrupt leaders, um, unless they, that this their job, their job depends on it. So, so the terminology, the, so a, a successful democracy is, a, is one, a democracy succeeds if leaders are always expected to serve responsibly. Uh, I'll say democracy is frustrated if the leader would be reelected always, even if acting corruptly. 
Now, success is what's best for voters. The leader, it's, about, about, it's, it's about the leader's behavior. But with probability one, we'll, our leaders will always be, be, be serving us respons you know, in the good way, in the responsible way. Frustration is what's optimal for an incumbent leader, that no matter what he does, he'll be reelected. Uh, in equilibrium, frustration implies that only a virtuous leader would serve responsibly. We, so we, if, if we get a good monarch, if we have a monarchy, a hereditary monarchy, and we get one of those rare virtuous monarchs, which will happen from time to time in the world, uh, they will, then we will get good behavior. But anyone else will, is going to be corrupt because they, they don't need to be good to us and they don't. Well. So voters' expected benefit from democracy is their expected value of payoffs in equilibrium minus what they would get if their leader were guaranteed, their current leader were guaranteed forever. You know, so if you have a virtuous leader uh, and, that vir if we uh, and that virtuous leader is good, that, uh, that does, that's not a benefit from democracy. The benefit from democracy is when a normal leader who isn't one of those virtuous princes um, behaves well, and that's presumably because of the, that's what they, because of the threat that they won't get reelected. So here's, X is a small transition cost, and epsilon is the probability of, uh, of being a virtuous type. And notice my condition here has epsilon being smaller than some positive number, which uh, rho is close to one, so that this is less than one is not, is not, is reasonable. Uh, what is this, B for? This is saying that being um, corrupt in one period is not as good as a stream of the benefits of power forever. Dividing by one minus rho is taking the present discounted value of a stream of B forever. And this says, this inequality says, suppose that being a good, a, 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 a leader who's not corrupt and but staying in office forever is, is better than, 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 than just having one period in office and being corrupt. That certainly is going to be necessary for, 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 uh, um, uh, for, 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 for democracy to work. And this says the transition costs are not too large, uh, but also that uh, an epsilon is a small number. Then, unitary democracy has a good equilibrium where democracy always succeeds and the voters expect the benefit is strictly positive. What? Anybody, anybody who we elect is going to serve us well. Why? If, 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 any, if he didn't, we'd, then, the vote, then when the next election comes up, we'd say, we don't want that person around. The representative voter will say, I want to change to the new person because I know it'll be good. But there's also, in, with these parameters, there's also a bad equilibrium where, where the voter gets, voters get to choose every period and they all agree, so any one voter can do it. But the voter will always say, no, I don't want to do the transition cost. I'll keep the, the corrupt person because I know that whoever else we brought in would, would, would expect to be re-elected re even corruptly. And so... Uh, um, I, don't, I just won't bother. I support the incumbent in power even though he's being corrupt. And that's it. So that, that's, that's, that's the model. We've succeeded in getting democracy to, 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 to fail in, in the sense of, of, of to be frustrated. Now, this, here we're going to have n provinces and the subscripts, one, are talking about the president, the leader of the national government has a benefit. He gets a benefit from corruption. A, a provincial governor has a benefit from serving responsibly and a larger benefit from serving corruptly. There's Voters at the from get benefit from the national government. They have transition costs from the national government. They, get, they also have benefits from the provincial government when it serves them well, and they have transition costs. So I've just replicated everything at the national and, and at federal level, and now the, now the, the, main, the main results. So, let's see. so I'm going to make the assumptions. The same assumptions are going to be made at both levels. So I'm going to make the assumptions that, it, that if you only looked at national democracy, it would have both my good and bad equilibria. If you only looked at provincial democracy, it would have the good and bad equilibria. The only thing that's connecting them is that if somebody is a, if, well, they, here it is. If you expected frustration of democracy, well, if, what is it? The only thing that's connecting them is that governors could rise to become presidents and there's something that says, ah, that, that, that it's more fun to b1 is bigger than b0 plus c0. That's saying it's more fun to be president and not corrupt than it is to be uh, governor and corrupt. That's, that's, you know, that, that you'd like to be president. And if there are many provinces, then, uh, prob then the chance of there being a virtuous governor maybe is not so small, is, is, is large. So, so, so here's what I'm just saying, that epsilon is not so small. This is the one place where, 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 where epsilon is not so small. I want n. If, the, if epsilon is very small, then I, the larger n would, would be enough so that there's some chance, significant chance, that, that some province might by accident get a virtuous governor. Okay. So now, we, say we, just, we define success and failure, uh, success and frustration of democracy the same way. Here's the result. There exists an equilibrium where provincial democracy is frustrated, but national democracy succeeds. That is, the, in this case, the, 
There's a rare governor who serves responsibly and can be identified as virtuous, but provincial voters still get no benefit from democracy. Uh, and, is, and, the, and, and the rare virtuous governor doesn't make him more attractive to national voters because they're already getting good presidents. There certainly exists an equilibrium where provincial democracy succeeds, but national democracy is frustrated. So we're getting corrupt national leadership, but our governors, uh, corrupt governors would not be reelected because if they, a corrupt governor in this, provincial democracy is succeeding, and if, if any governor were corrupt, everyone would say, well, let's go get another one, he'll be good. Um, and, so the, and, and the need to get reelected as governor gets governors to act responsibly. And national voters say, maybe some of our governors are virtuous, but we can't tell which ones because most the reason why they're acting good is because they, they, they know that they need that to be reelected. So the, and the probability that they're, that they're actually virtuous is, is so small that it's not worth the transition cost to getting to electing them president. Uh, so corrupt presidents are reelected. But these mixed equilibria require voters to have inconsistent expectations about democracy at different levels. They're taller, each of them requires them to be totally pessimistic about whether they can you know, get a better person the next time, uh, at one, but at one level, but, but, but totally believe that they could get a better person the next time at the other level. There obviously exists an equilibrium where provincial and democracy both succeed. But theorem, there does not exist an equilibrium in which provincial and national democracy both are frustrated. And the reason is, uh, in any well, here's the theorem, in any sequential equilibrium of the federal game, as long as at least some province has a governor that's not yet acted corruptly, democracy cannot be frustrated at both the national level and at all provincial levels. Why? <laughs> at, 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 if, when national democracy is frustrated, then in any province where voters have a, rec a governor of, who, with a record of no past corruption, the voters expected benefit from democracy must be positive. Why? Because if the voters in a problem, when national democracy is frustrated, it's just not working, we, we, we understand our national leaders are always going to treat us corruptly, then in our province, we're going to look at them and say, do we think that, that, we're, that a de provincial democracy is getting our governors, at least, to behave better? Well, if we don't, that means that no governor is behaving well except in, uh, because he's virtuous. So then if any governor did behave well, Everyone would say, ah, there's a virtuous person at last, let's make him president. But then, of course, uh, that's not an equilibrium either, because now, now we're actually going to have to get positive, a positive fraction of governors imitate, uh, imitating uh, uh, virtuous people in hopes of becoming president, and now it, democracy is providing some benefits and it's working. Nigeria looks an awful lot like this model. It, uh, not this model is a fantasy, so it's, but, it, but it, damn it, Nigeria. And Nigeria, I don't, you know, as, as, as an observer from afar, even I have heard that there are a couple of governors who seem, people say, ah, this, this governor is actually doing pretty well in his province. I understand Lagos province, I think, has a good governor. A, no, if I know it, then so do voters around Nigeria. But people say, ah, I've also heard it from afar, ah, but he belongs to the wrong tribe. So, so what, what goes wrong in the model, what, one possibility is, you know, Genuine federal democracy has not existed in Nigeria that long, a little more than 15 years, 10, 15 years. Maybe it's, we're still out, of, we haven't gotten to the equilibrium yet. But, um, but maybe uh, that epsilon, prob the, the virtuous type, oh, he's just a person who's virtuous to, the, to, the, to the, that ethnic group and wouldn't, wouldn't be virtuous when given the, uh, anyway. so that's where it was. Uh, so I should, I should finish. Uh, there's the proof. Uh, there's the, I, I'm sorry, I like this. The possibility of democratic advancement makes politics more competitive. Let me say, in, I had the privilege of being at a conference in China a few years ago talking about uh, uh, po political, the political system pe and, and possible reform. Um, and it led me to think, uh, I mean, this was not a secret, that, the, 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 but uh, we did, weren't there to, to, to advocate revolutionary democracy, but it led me to think, What's the closest to what exists? In, in China, there are local elections at the very lowest level in which they are, are genuinely competitive. Uh, they, and the evidence on whether they're providing benefits is quite mixed. I think this argument is not necessarily about national and local. It, it's an argument that having democracy at at least two levels with, with the possibility of democratic advantage. Everyone understands in politics, it, in, in politics and you know, in any life, in any organized life, advancement is very important to people in their careers. Uh, and if politics is about the voters getting to do something, 
if, there is, if there's only democracy at one level of authority, then there's no rising from a lower level of, there's no democratic advancement from a lower level of, that where you get some authority and then you get more authority when the voters give, approve you to, to advance. So uh, under federalism, we, 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 I've, uh, federalism lowers entry barriers into national policies. Gives, it's in this model, it gives local leaders an opportunity to prove, in this case, that, that give evidence that they might be the virtuous type, which is their qualifications for higher office. But on the other hand, um, it also generated a positive, uh, it gives local leaders more incentive to, my governors had some incentive to, 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 to behave well, not just to get reelected, but also to, to hope to, to get promoted to the next higher office, which I called president, but it could have been just going from township uh, uh, council, to, from leader of a township to government to, to a county government. So uh, maybe th multiple levels. Uh, there's the last model, which I'm not going to have time to talk about. I'll show you pictures. I want to show you a picture. It's, an, it's a picture of, of an island in which uh, when one island frees its surfs, uh, it creates, um, I don't know, it's, an, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a model in which it's given, it's a kind of given balkanization. It starts from, uh, uh, what, let me just say where this is advertised for that. This is a, oh, there it is. It's a model of Capitalist Investment and Political Liberalization, published in Theoretical Economics in 2010. Uh, and what I said, it's, it's a model in which it's taken as given that there are a bunch of islands, each of which has a sovereign ruler, but that ruler can choose to be autocratic or, or liberal. And liberal just means creating a vulnerability so that le the liberalism is, political liberalization is measured by a parameter lambda which is a number between zero and one, which is the probability that if the ruler tried to expropriate investment, capitalist investment in this island, then the ruler would fall. And if you have an authority, you could set it equal to zero, and then you, you don't, are in no danger of, of being overthrown. But on the other hand, people are, outsiders are afraid to invest because they know you could, you could, you could expropriate. On the other hand, if it's uh, one, then, then you're, you, you're at risk of being overthrown by whenever there's a scandal, but, but, but capitalists know that you'll get more investment in the island. And the model ends, the, the paper ends with something where with these given islands, when I then, there are the, these, these investments which are elastic, but then I add, we're going to make it part of a country in the sense that m labor is mobile between the islands, but each island has its own local lord who can choose to, to liberalize and make c competitive politics or be non-liberal. And the result is when, when, when the workers can move between the islands, which is what Thibault was talking about with local government, that the local government is more competitive because of people's ability to move between constituencies. This is without any exogenous democracy. Then some fraction of the islands choose to liberalize, become very liberal, and some remain uh, authoritarian, but most people and most investment are in the, uh, these, these liberal islands. So this is my picture of, of uh, of 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 the, the the power of of the cities in 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 England uh, to drive uh, a, a liberalization uh, in a larger uh, anyway that that's I should stop so what if, well, no that's that's that picture and I what did I want to say in conclusion let me try to because um, I think I'm exactly at the pointed hour of one minute of concluding uh, uh, so I started with a model that strong candidates for national leadership that motivate political supporters by promise of future rewards, but they, they must become politically vulnerable when supporters become cheated. Uh, powerful offices that entail moral hazard rents become patronage prizes that national leaders may naturally want to allocate to their supporters, but without constitutional guarantees of local political autonomy, a national leader may have difficulty allowing these patronage prizes to depend on, a, on, on local approval and, and thus disperse local um, information, uh, disperse local information about the productivity of local public investments can be, may be available for holding local public agents accountable only when there's some constitutional decentralization. Uh, that was the point of the, of, of the second model uh, and, and therefore uh, was my attempt to make an argument that the quality of local public services may suffer in a, ce in a centralized state and then I argued that, that, that uh, uh, political decentralization may make national politics more successful, more competitive, 
uh, because successful local leaders have an ability to prove their qualifications to become strong candidates for higher office. I think when I said that last night, I hope that it's a long sentence, but I hope people were willing to accept it. I've given it in a mathematical model, which is actually remarkably limited to what extent I was actually able to derive, but something was derived. But the point is then that decentralization may be the against the interest of established national leaders, um, and, uh, uh, and therefore there's reason to believe that in the absence of uh, some pressure, uh, decentralization might be undersupplied in, in the world, and, uh, and, and that, that makes it worthwhile to talk about in an academic context so that voices for development and, and for, for de de development in the world who, who are trying to make the world a better place for the majority of, 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 of our human residents might say that, that we should be talking about uh, political centralization and decentralization as an important constitutional question that those who allege they are improving their country uh, uh, should be asked to, to address. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the privilege of talking to this morning.